Okay, so now that we've been through our sound beam 2, let's plug everything in. Normally, I would say don't power anything up until the very end. However, this laptop has a very short battery life. So it's plugged in already so that it doesn't die in the middle of a disaster. <laughs> okay. So step one, we connect our audio interface to our laptop. And to do that, we use the USB power cable that I talked about earlier, which is this one. This is great because on this connection here, this one that kind of looks like a square, it can only go into one place on the back of this audio interface, which is good. It means that we can't get confused with anything. So that's lovely. Then we take the other end and you put it into a USB port on your computer, which on my one is on this side. Your ones might be closer, that's okay. Next, we take our MIDI cable. So the MIDI cable, looks like this. It has one, two, three, four, five prongs on the inside. It sort of looks like a smiley face. And this is where the labelling that I talked about earlier really comes in handy. So one label should say sound beam two, MIDI out. And on the other side, the label should say sound module MIDI in, or it might say audio interface MIDI in. Now, if your cable doesn't have labels on them, I would stop this video now and put some labels on them just, just in case. Because it means if you have to troubleshoot anything at any point, it makes things a lot easier. So, sound module MIDI in. We take that end and go to our sound module or audio interface. Find where it says MIDI in, which is there. I'll plug this one in here. Let me round. Lovely. Then we take the other end which says sound beam 2 MIDI out. We go to the back of our sound beam 2 and over here you'll have three MIDI connections. The writing has worn off actually on this one so I've had to label it. So if I were you and your writing is starting to wear off it's maybe a good idea just to label in there. So we have MIDI out, or sorry, MIDI in, MIDI out, MIDI through. So we are looking for sound beam to MIDI out. There we go, MIDI out in there, like that. Lovely. Our power supply for our sound beam, that's where I'd go next. Plug that in. Then plug this in over here. This is quite good because there's only one place this can go into, which is there. Next, our speaker. Leave that there. So take your jack cable. So for me, because I only have one speaker, I only have one cable at one end. If you have two speakers, you'll have two connections at both ends, okay? So let's plug that into there, into speaker. Then on your interface, go to output. Okay, that's really important, go to output and go Red for right, white 
for left. Okay, good. Let's plug our switch box in to our sound beam. Just gonna move that speaker for now. This has a connection, so only one of this kind on the back as well, which is good. Back goes in there and just sort of tighten the prongs a little bit for an added bit of safety. Yeah, that's good, like that. There. Okay, this is where it might get a little bit confusing. Take your sound beam sensor driver box, put that there, and take your driver cable. Okay. Now again, an important piece of labelling. One end of your driver cable will say driver, the other end of your driver cable will say sound beam 2. Right, so remember your driver cable is slightly different to your MIDI one. It has the silver connections at the end and it actually has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 prongs on the inside. I'm not sure if you can see that. It has 6 in there. So, let's take the end that says sound beam 2. And for the purposes of this video, we're going to plug it in to number two over on this side. And the bit that says driver, you're going to plug that in to the sound beam sensor driver box into the section marked controller on the front there, okay? And this will only go in one way, so it should be a firm push, but you shouldn't be having to force it in. If you're having to force it in, you're perhaps in the wrong one, or you have it upside down, or something, but you should feel it. Oh, there's a click. And strong push in, firm push. Good. That's that sort. Take your microphone stand, put your clip on, let's give it a wee twist. What's that? Take your sound beam sensor, put it in there. It does look like a microphone now, right? Right enough. Take the cable from your sound beam sensor and plug it into your sensor driver box, the bit that's marked sensor. So that just goes in there, that'll slot in. Lovely. If you have some switches, take a switch. And let's plug it in. And put it into number five. Lovely, okay, now let's turn the sound beam unit on, make sure we're plugged in there, lovely, and turn it on, excellent. Now, some good, good things happening here, we have a light that is showing on our switch box, which means that has power, so that's good. We're hearing some static from the sound beam sensor, which is good. That means there's some sort of signal getting there, and if we put our hand in front of it, we should see an orange light here on the sensor driver box, and the red light on here on the actual sound beam 2 unit. That's great. So, let me change something here from a previous setting. Then I'm going to open logic. I'll just load up nicely to a previous project that I'd worked on. I'm going to turn my speaker on. 
Okay, yours might be on at the wall or you might have a speaker at the back, that's fine. And if I press play on here, I have a backing track that I'd recorded in. And if I press play, there we go. We've got some music coming out of our speaker there, I'll turn it up a little bit. And we should be getting, if I move my hand in front of the sound beam sensor. We will get some, some music from here. Lovely. And if I push the switch. Yes, and the same from there as well. So if I play the backing track. Perhaps try and do these two at once. And there we go. That's everything all plugged in and working for our Soundbeam 2.